if you like your old consumer electronics to have lots of lights and dials and fancy frilly things, you're going to like this 1973 General Electric Quadraphonic 8-track system, the SC4205B. And it has all of those things, fancy lights and a joystick for controlling your four-channel balance. Now, unfortunately, on this particular system here, my right rear channel is dead and I haven't been able to fix it, so we're only going to be using three channels today. And uh, let's take a look at the speakers we're going to use. For our testing today, we're going to be using the set of Panasonic SB633 speakers from, I think, 1974. And there was four of these with one of the Panasonic quadraphonic systems, the SE4400, which I no longer have. And we're only going to be using three, left front, right front. And I've got the left rear sitting behind me because the right channel is dead. But these should be very similar in quality to what the GE system would have had. All right, on the front we have our power switch as you've seen. And we have our 8-track program selector with uh, associated program indicator lights, our 8-track cartridge slot. We have headphone jacks. If you happen to have a quadraphonic headphone system with two plugs, they would go in here. If you only had a stereo headphone system, you'd plug it into the left side there. Here we have our quadra sound system, uh, balance system, I think they call it something like that. And you'll notice that it has a little joystick, similar to some of the other lower quality 8-track uh, players at the time, quadraphonic systems, and you'll see it has a little white line there that kind of shows you where your balance is overall, and you can set that to however you want it, and you'll notice there are actually numbers along the scales too. For right, left, front, and back, you can read the numbers to where you're at. We have volume, treble, and Base, low to high. We have our radio uh, dial scale with an FM stereo light. We have our tuning control and our function selector, AM, FM, FM stereo, tape, auxiliary two channel or auxiliary four channel. Uh, we'll look at those inputs on the back. And here we have Matrix 1 and Matrix 2. Now I believe that's going to be for LPs that had, there were various competing encoding systems at the time. Uh, they weren't necessarily correct, discrete, four channel. Some were better than others, and I'm not sure which GE systems decoding system used. And I have no quadraphonic records to begin with, so we're going to have to kind of overlook that. But I'm not sure those were some type of pseudo-quadraphonic decoding systems or just sort of a effect system. I'm not sure which one the GE system used. From Billboard magazine, June 30th, 1973, an article about GE's 1973-74 product line. Over in the right column, first full paragraph. Top of the line is the model SC4205. This latest addition to GE's growing line of four channel receivers carries a $339.95 price tag and comprises a discrete four channel eight track taste system with AM, FM, FM stereo, as well as four two way air suspension speakers. There's also a matrix decoder. The unit produces 40 watts of peak music power and can reproduce discrete 8 track tapes, encoded discs, encoded 4 channel broadcasts, and stereo synthesizer. Around back, we have our model number, made in Korea, our power cord, 
speaker outs front and back right and left line out right and left auxiliary inputs front back right left antenna connection on the power cord and then over here you can see our date code 5329 that's 3 is going to be 1973 and various other normal markings back there when I got the system it was broken and I had to do some repairs so I took the time to get a look around inside and check out the 8-track changing mechanism we can get a peek inside and a reason the 8-track is not working this breaks off Let's see if I can find a belt that fits. I don't think I have any. Might have to order one. All right, I got my new belt in from Turntable Needles. Flat belt, medium, 9.6 inches. I think the medium is the uh, thickness, which in my case I measured this at 0 0.02 inches thick, 0 0.2 inches wide, and somewhere less than 10 inches long and they even sent me a little alcohol pad to clean it with clean the belt path with seems to fit just fine before we close it back up let's do a little circuit board porn tour around here here's our tuning board our radio tuning board and this is the decoder board I'm sitting on top of it, covering half of it up. Let's try and get a little closer up there. Some of those things. Behind it we have our main amplifier board. over this way and here we have our tone board up front and our transformer back here we have our little quadra sound joystick control See if we can see that work. Where's it at? Coming over to this side, we have our power board and our solenoid board. There's a very large capacitor here, 3300 microfarads, and I think that's associated with the, the power board but I'm not sure of course there's our newly belt taped 8-track player looking at it from the front you can see there's eight Sanyo transistors there there's actually two each on the other side of here and here, so that's 12 Sanyo transistors there, and there's uh, another one here on the solenoid board. So there's lots of Sanyo identified things here. Since Sanyo is one of the makers of discrete four channel machines, it stands to reason this could have been a Sanyo machine. before we put everything back in the case take a look in here this is a plywood much easier to spin it now that it's empty 
A little information on the bottom. Wood finish is grained vinyl on plywood. Okay, inside the cartridge chamber you can see the head's in good condition. And you can see the uh, four sort of black stripes which indicate it's an actual quadraphonic machine. And you can't see it, but the program light is lit for program one. Let me press the switch and watch it switch to uh, chant program two. Now, pressing it down again, since it's only two programs on a quadraphonic tape, it should go back to channel one. But you can see that's kind of a sloppy mechanism, but it does go back to channel one. Let's try and watch that same process from the top, switching from program one to program two and then back to program one. That's one to two. And back to program one. Now I'm actually playing just a stereo tape. We're on program one now. Program two, program three, program four, and back to program one. So it behaves differently when there's a stereo tape in. So how does the 8-track system know if it's playing a stereo track or a quadraphonic track? Well, it's this little indent right there. That indicates you have an quadraphonic tape. Of course, another way for you to tell, for you to tell, the, computer, the uh, system can't tell, is to look and see how many programs it has. If it only has two programs, you're looking at a quadraphonic system. Four channels times two programs is eight tracks. Whereas on a normal tape, there is no slot in the upper left. And you have four programs. Four programs times a right and left channel is eight tracks. I turned the uh, room lights off for a minute so you can get a better idea of how the backlighting of the joystick and the radio dial look in more darkened conditions. It's Fairly, it's fairly dramatic. All right, we'll do a little uh, performance testing here. We'll start with the tape player. We're going to try a standard 8-track. Ah, the joys of 8-track switching.
that's a normal 8 track. Let's try a quadraphonic tape. I notice the uh, slot there in the upper left and only two programs. back to one because it knows it's a quadraphonic tape. That's playing from behind me. Okay, so you've seen how a quadraphonic tape cycles back and forth. You saw it earlier on the inside, but it's kind of interesting to watch it while the music playing. Ted Heath was sounding a little sour there sometimes, I'm not sure why. So uh, we'll try one of the RCA ones, the Q8s. Those are a pretty standard format you'll find. For quadraphonic. I wouldn't have to work hard <laughs> if I were a bitty bitty rich. I'd a did a little man. Because of our traditions, we've kept our balance for many years. Let's try the radio performance. We're lucky enough to own land, so we know first time. All that kind of stuff. They get out to see the world instead of watching it on TV. I like how the stereo indicator actually says stereo star. I'm not sure what that means. An urban green car was fast with the high tips inside. Take to the beach, Cape Grand Cherokee, the most awarded SUV ever. Sponsored by Harley Davidson and Benson Motorcycles. 329 7800. Summer's here, and Sharon Coke is back. My floppy head killed a man. What? What? Fans Workshop, call 1 800. Girls all around this small town. Oh. Let's oh. see what David's talking oh. about in Baton Rouge. Oh. Right size, right care, right here. July 23rd, from noon to 6 p.m. on Hooters Greenwood. Hooters will be giving away. Time to release your summer with Jeep. The most old SUV brand. No matter your age or your condition, we can help. Well, it really 
It felt amazing. Uh, they die in this but cars targets will likely also come with higher energy costs and well there's all the commercials and news you can hear on FM it's getting to be a lot like AM anymore Speaking of which, let's try AM. I usually don't get anything until 700. WLW in Cincinnati, if I get that. It's barely. Anything that makes this zero zero. I'm having a stroke. A tired mom, some work. Well, that's my Latino station at the top of the AM dial, which means we've uh, reached the end of that. Well, that's some of the performance and features of the 1973 General Electric Quadraphonic 8-track system, the SC4205B. Hope you enjoyed this little flashback to a time of joysticks on your consumer electronics and fancy lights. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't, please subscribe.